with it. And what was basically going on is that we'll keep this conventional system because we have no other alternative. We'll go with this conventional system and we'll try and apply as much of the Islamic principles as we can. Okay? Given the limitations of those days. This is 1989. How many years is that from today? How many? Um, maybe you could do, someone could do shabbat to the chef and get some, get some extended time. <laughs> okay, but uh, sorry, just one minute, just five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. So, anyways, this is what now what happened is you had that operation where okay, we'll just station a guy to say Bismillah and whatever is going by, hopefully that is blessed. It started from there, but then it evolved. It evolved to, you know what? We need to station people to do slaughter manually, which was accomplished, okay? We need to make sure that Bismillah is being applied on each and every single animal, which was accomplished. We need to regulate the stunning, making sure that no animal is getting killed because of the stunning, which was accomplished. But it happened in phases. It didn't happen overnight. It happened in phases. So what we need to understand is the complexities behind the scene, the social context, and how we're trying to work to make things better. You are not going to get it the way it was done back at home, where I can pick the chicken from the, from the coop, okay, I'll get spotted in front of me, skin prepared, put in the back, and I can walk home with it. I saw that with my own eyes in India. I thought, I wish we could do that in Canada, but that doesn't happen here, okay? So this is one thing that you have to understand. The complexities. The other thing in the in red meat industry, what happens there? You're going to have cattle coming in. They are going to first go in a restraining box. In that restraining box, they're going to be shot with a captive bolt pistol. What that does, it hits the brain and basically it explodes the brain. That's what it does. It basically gets the bolt, the bolt when it's penetrated, it gets the brain to explode. And now this animal has only got a maximum of two minutes to live. Okay, two minutes to live, meaning for the heart to continue pumping. What they do after that is they'll shackle the hind leg, they'll lift it upside down, and then they'll do a European cut. They cut like this, and then they cut like this. Okay, this is the conventional way. This is what you and I walked into. There's nothing to do with halal. That's how things were done here. We had to make changes. So how, what did the changes look like? Put it in a restraining box, no shooting. But now what you're going to do is you're going to have a brace for the head. It's going to lift up the head. You're going to make the incision. Bismillah And then after it's bled, now you're going to do the further processing. That change took time. It didn't happen overnight. Okay? So this is what some of the things, these are, this is what, how things happen in the industrial era. We are trying to apply the Islamic principles to the best of our abilities given that we're a minority and we don't own the operations. Now I will finish up with this. We have to get over our differences. And this is why, you know, we have, you know, our mashayikh such as Sheikh Hamid Sidi, Dr. Iqbal Nadvi, Sheikh Abdullah Idrisi, myself, we all came together and we decided we need to create a standard for halal in Canada, which is now in your uh, handout. You're going to see the standard. Oh, you did? Okay. But they have the guidelines. So the guidelines, uh, is something that our dear Sheikh has written and there's a standard that has now just been prepared. And this is going to be a living document. Why? Because of Industry 4.0, we are facing new things that you and I have never heard of. For example, gas stunning. We have never come across, there's two things called controlled atmosphere stunning, where now, remember I told you about the, the water bath? That's being eliminated now. Why? Because it's visually not, it doesn't visually appear to the animal welfare groups. So they want to introduce gas, which is taken from Europe. And there's two things, that two methods. One is controlled atmospheric killing. This is what they're pushing for. That the animal should be dead before it's gone. This is what they want. Because it's humane. Why is it humane? Because it's visually appealing. It's all about the visuals. This is what you and I are facing now. Versus controlled atmosphere study, where it's not dead, okay, but it is brain dead according to some, and at the same time, after you're going to slaughter, the blood flow is not going to be the same. This I have personally seen with my own eyes, okay. 
this is the new challenge that we're facing. It's gone beyond hands on the machines and all that. That's an issue that's buried now. Next thing we're also finding, stem cell meat. Stem cells taken from an animal and meat grown from it. Is it halal? Is it haram? You don't know what industry 4.0 is to bring to us. This is basically what you and I are facing. My humble request to all of us now, in closing, is that let's try and understand what the situation is that you and I are living in. Not everything is black and white. Let's work together as a community to make the industry better for ourselves and our coming generations. Inshallah, if we keep at it the way we are, where we are inching away, where we, we're basically getting a foothold into the industry. We are now having a say in the industry. A day will come when we will have control of the industry, inshallah, in a good way. Okay, if there's anyone that's recording here that's not going to publish this and is going to do Islamophobic stuff, I'll put this inside and we're saying in a good way. We're going to be contributing to the welfare of Canada, not to the harm of Canada. Jazakallah khair wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, takbir. Allah, alhamdulillah.